Radio Broccoli, officially London's number one hospital radio station. Hello and welcome to Broccoli News, Radio Broccoli's weekly show with news, interviews and information, including updates on all you need to know about what's happening in and around the hospital. I'm Alan Joyce and tonight we listen back to highlights of today's Buttercup Walk, which took place here in the grounds of the hospital. You may have heard our live coverage earlier on today, but now is your chance to listen back to some of the highlights. We'll hear from the Barbara Bus charity, Opus and the Buggy team, along with others, as well as some of those who took part in the walk as well. Then at 7.30 tonight, your chance to win some super Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving your bed on Bedside Bingo with David Rouch. And at 8 o'clock tonight, it's all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show. So stay tuned to London's longest-running hospital radio station, the multi-award-winning Radio Broccoli, still officially number one in London. So the hospital's annual Buttercup Walk event took place earlier on today and this year incorporated the annual Stanmore Fair as well. Radio Broccoli had a stall at the event along with a team of our volunteers. So let's listen back to some of the highlights with our team of reporters. Emma O'Connor, Amy Roberts, Jack Gibbs, Sophie Horrocks and firstly Martin Gull. Well you may wonder why the Buttercup Walk was set up at Stanmore Orthopaedic Hospital. Well they have boards in the hospital at the moment where I can read exactly about when it was set up, where your money goes. The first Buttercup Day was launched by His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, but with the coming of the Second World War, the Buttercup Day was postponed. Local children picked buttercups from the local countryside and sold them in central London to raise funds for the hospital. The original Buttercup Day took place in the 1930s between the First and Second World War. The fundraising tradition was revived in 2003 with the first ever Buttercup Walk, where patients, past and present, families and friends all came together to take part in the sponsorship walk and fate in aid of the RNOH charity. Since then, thousands of patients and friends of the RNOH and several celebrities have taken part in the Buttercup Walk. You may ask yourself, where does the money go when we fundraise? To date, fund raised from previous Buttercup Walks have made it possible for the RNAOH to set up of a baby hips clinic, complete with a brand new ultrasound machine. That was in 2003. Communication aids to assist our patients with special needs specialist pay equipment for the children's ward, customised chairs to allow sclerosis patients to be x-rayed more comfortably, and pelvic harnesses used in the treatment of hip dysplasia in young infants. Make it possible with the Buttercup Walk. I'm here with Talia and her mum Sarah, who are here at the Buttercup Walk. Sarah, tell us about your connection to RNRH. Well, it's a pleasure being here, first of all, and it's a great cause. RNRH is an amazing hospital with wonderful staff. Uh, my, my story goes back about, how many years? Three years, Talia? Yes. So basically, um, they have supported me uh, with my joint problems. Um, so I have problems with my... Um, hands, fingers, little joints, um, and the knees and ankles. And they, um, they have given me physio, uh, they've given me all sorts of medications. So it's a great team and they've always got a smile on their face. <laughs> As do you, because it is a great day today yeah. to support everything that happens at RNRH. Talia, you've got a medal on. How did you win that? Um, well, I was doing the go-karts race and I got a medal, so... Does that mean you're the fastest? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and is it a whole family that we've got here today? Yes, we've got Talia's brother, what's his name? Aria. Aria. And Grandma, who's uh, just enjoying the music. And we'll be going round and getting a few, a few bits and bobs to all the family. Yeah. Is and it... then doing the walk as well. Of yeah. course, yeah. So, yeah. Mum, are you doing the walk? Yeah, I'm doing half, half a mile. That's all I can handle. And you're doing a one mile. Are you going to race each other? No. 
Maybe Talia and Daddy. I don't know. We might do. Yeah. Is it your first time at the Buttercup Walk? Um, it's my second time. Yeah, it's um, our second time except for my brother because he was like, he's he three now. Big. So now he's, he's big enough to come. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, it's so great to hear how much the hospital and everyone means to you. Yes, yes. It's quite emotional for me, but thank you very much for interviewing us. No problem. Have a great day. Thank you. So what do you think? What do you think of the atmosphere so far? It's good so far. We're just trying to figure everything out and go and find what we want to go and do first. But so far, so good. Well, I see you have you, know, you have your young one there. I imagine you uh, you wish to go over yonder to the bouncy castles yes. at some point. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, what took your interest? What uh, what made you decide that you want to come here? Um, I'm treated here for my hip condition. Oh, I so see. we just thought that we'd do something to help raise some money and get involved a bit. Um, <laughs> still not sure what that is. Yep. Mm. Just what you need on the radio. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, well, how long have you been here so far? Did you get here early? Literally, we've been here five minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I was I was going to ask if you would recommend it based on the opinion that you formulated, but it's it's a bit early for that. <laughs> As I, so far, we would, yes. Mm. Yeah, so far. <laughs> we've literally been here, yeah, five minutes, so... Yeah, fair enough. We'll have an explore. Good morning, I'm here with Michael who's in training for the Buttercup Walk alongside Gemma who's been working with him. How are you Michael? Fine, thank you. And how long have you been preparing for this Buttercup Walk? Oh, about a month I suppose. We're going to aspire gym here in the hospital. I've been going twice a week and swimming. I just hope I'll do it because I've got a lot of people sponsored me. Great, is that support from your family? And yeah, your family and friends, yeah. yeah. Well, my, my oldest boy says he'd give me double the money if I went on the Bouncy Castle, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And has it been hard work training for this? No, it's because it's when you're in, in the orthopaedic hospital, you, the gym's a really good, you know, good thing to do every day. And if you can keep it all when you come out, it's better for you, you know. What's your time expecting to be? Well, I just want to finish it. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to race. Just, just to finish it, if I can. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole point of the day, isn't it? To have a great time. Oh, yeah, it's, it's nice. A lot of people here are already there. Only, only 12 o'clock, yeah? No. Yeah. I've seen the barbecue. That means yeah, it's a yeah, good yeah. party already. Yeah. <laughs> are you planning on staying all day? Yeah, I've got some grandchildren coming. So, looking forward to it. One of my little ones are uh, autistic, so he's going to have fun on the bouncy castle and that. It'll be really have some fun. And is it, is it nice to be back at the hospital? Do you have good memories? Oh, yeah, great memories, yeah. yeah. The, you can't beat the hospital. The people are working, it's great, great. When you're feeling down in a bad place, like this place lifts you up, you know. Good camaraderie here and all. Lots really of good. friends here. Oh, yeah, you become, you meet lots of friends here. Amazing. Stay friends for life. Yeah. That's why I'm back, you know, now. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best of luck. Yeah. I hope that we'll see you all on the walk. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. No problem. <laughs> Bye now. Well, I'm here on the buggy services at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital, and I'm speaking to the gentleman who is driving me at the moment. Sir, what's your name? Hi. Where do you come from? <laughs> hi, hi. My name is uh, Colin Jones. I live in uh, Carpenter's Park, about five miles away. And what's this buggy service all about at the hospital? Well, it started last uh, July. Uh, it's organised by Keith, you all know Keith, and uh, he's got two buggies, and we run a service from Monday to Friday. We do 10 shifts, so that's a half a day each. We've got 10 regular drivers who do that, and then we've got some others as well who help out when we are ill or when we can't uh, drive for whatever reason. And uh, we drive people, patients and uh, vis visitors ar around the site, which as you know is quite extensive and it's um, hilly as well. So we're able to drive them a lot from the car park, which is where we are now, up to the outpatient departments, to the wards, to orthotics, um, all over the site. And it's proven to be very popular indeed. We've had a lot of use of the two buggies 
and uh, people are very grateful indeed for the um, service that we and were, provide. And were these buggies donated or did the hospital pay for it through the NHS? It, it's all done through the RNOH, RNOH charity and uh, one of them be, uh, belongs to the orthotics department which they have uh, given us on permanent loan and the other, the other one was bought. And they are quite quite expensive, um, mm -hmm. thousands of pounds each. Um, each of them is uh, sec second hand. Uh, we need two because they are electric, so uh, we have to put one on charge while while the other one is being used. And each one will last about half a day, and then we swap over. Right. So, do we need any customers to come on board? Uh, ask the ask those three people over there. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you like a lift? Do you want a lift? Yeah. yeah, I'd love one. Come on then. Come on then. Jump on board. Jump on board. <laughs> I do love you. Right. She can sit on my lap. Is that okay? Yes, one? please, if you would. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. This is. This is like. like this is like being on a golf course. Oh, and. All right. Good. Now, on the outside, uh, there's there's a seat belt. It's just a lap belt. Gives a long pull if you haven't already. Because it might stick on you, otherwise you have to go, go back all the way. I'll go around me and hold you. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just take it back all the way. Give it and have you come for a walk, or are you going to be doing just We're to look around? the walk. We are definitely walk. going up there with her. Right. I was on a winner, and now it's arguing with me. Hold on. Okay. There you go. Oh. Take, yeah, take, take your backing. The long pull out. That's it. There, there we go. We go. <laughs> right. Now we need to slot these in. As, oh, definitely. As we all yeah. have. I don't, I don't mind visiting. Don't no. be patient. Okay, we're all in, so we're off. We're on our way up to the start of the walk. Had you been a patient here? No, I used to work here. You used, I used to, work to work here? in the children's ward. Okay. Lots so. of changes going on at the hospital I at the know. moment. Hopefully for the better. Hopefully for the better. As you can see, that, that, that bit with the car park, old car park. Well, um, Coxton was just scary because every time it rained, all the sheets and blankets had to come out of the cupboard and block the doors because we would flood. Right. <laughs> so it would all run down from the, from the underwalkway, all run down there and yeah. We'd be splashing around. It's great fun because it used to rain on nights, which is what I used to do. So yeah, then the next morning we're sending something out every bit of laundry. <laughs> So how long has this buggy service been working then? Oh, I say um, it uh, started last Ju July, so we're just about coming up to a year now. Right. And uh, we, we, we keep track of the number of um, people that we're able to give a lift to each, each shift. Mm. And uh, we're getting up to over 500 a week, which is pre pretty good. So uh, I say it is... And again, you need, you need to look at the health and safety of the people who are coming on board. Uh, so obviously you just said about the safety belts but if they've sort of like got their, their leg in plaster, you've really got to give them more leg room. Yes, that's right. On I mean, board. <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 I mean, we, we'll take um, all, all, almost anyone who can get on board um, is welcome. We, we have, the, the only problem we have is with uh, people in wheelchairs. Uh, we can't really take them because, as you, you, you can see, we haven't got the room. Yeah. Uh, on this particular buggy, we have a box in the back. So if they do have a fold-up chair, then, mm -hmm. then we can put that in there. Okay. But the, uh, the uh, bu buggies that would take a proper wheelchair are very, very expensive. Right. Okay, ladies, thank, thank you very you much. So very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so we've just dropped off uh, three lovely ladies. Uh, as you may have heard, one lady used to be the nurse in Coxon Ward, telling us about the sheets that used to get wet. So... Uh, Lovely service we offer here at the RNOH. And the Buttercup continues for 2017. I'm here with Maxine, who's part of the Barbara Bus Fund. Maxine, tell us more about this great initiative. The Barbara Bus Fund provides wheelchair accessible vehicles. It's based at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital, Stanmore, and was started in 1968 by Barbara Wernley, who herself was a patient, inpatient at the hospital, having contracted polio. And it's still live and kicking today? Absolutely, we're about to celebrate our 50th birthday next year. Congratulations. Fantastic. So what sort of services does it provide? We have a fleet of wheelchair accessible vehicles, so if you have to travel in your wheelchair, you can come and register, you can bring somebody who can register as a self-driver, and then you're able to use the vehicles as you wish. Wow, and how many people do you help with this a year, do you know? I think we've got... I think we carried out something like 3,000 journeys last year. Um, 
Yes, and it's 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 growing and growing. We've got ten vehicles based at Stanmore, one at the National Spinal Injuries Unit up at Stoke Mandeville, one at Pinderfields Hospital in Wakefield, and three in the local community in Wales. Amazing. Yes. And is there a personal connection while you're involved? No, I just work here. I just work here. <laughs> but the other other people connected to the fund have uh, personal connections. Our chairman. Richard Holland, MBE, is uh, Barbara's nephew. So uh, it's great. And uh, we're very busy and we need some volunteers. So if anybody would like to volunteer as a driver, please contact us. Amazing. You hear the call, people. This is your chance to volunteer. Thank you so much. And are you here all day? We will be here. Excellent. Yes. Um, you're with the, the dog and the family. So the it family. sounds like a good day out. Yes, Barbara was very... Uh, very keen on family and uh, that's lucky because I have to bring them so yes. <laughs> just, just hoping they're going to behave exactly <laughs> and are you supporting anyone doing the walk today no we're not I'm afraid we're just here as an exhibitor as a supporter of the hospital actually excellent and doing the dog show. Um, oh yes and entering the dog show <gasps> oh it's so, an official event it's over there in the corner have you seen it wonderful in the purple <laughs> with the purple balloons yes well we're... all good luck what's your dog's name he's called Logan mm. Logan I hope you do very very well yes he will. Uh, he loves it. He loves it, and uh, I'm sure there'll be lots and lots of entries. There's a few dogs hanging around. Thank you very much. Nice Excellent. To talk to you. It's great to hear about the Barbara Bus Fund. Thank yeah. you. This is Jack Gibbs, Radio Rockley, and I'm speaking to Lorraine Reed. Hello. All right. So, uh, what drove you here? Because this is a sort of author's corner, as it were. Is this the first time you've uh, participated in the fate? Um, it is the first time that I've participated in this fate and it's really lovely. Everyone's having so much fun and uh, we just wanted to take part in something that's um, really important to so many people and um, it's really nice to be able to raise some money as well. So it's great. All right. How are, you, uh, how are you finding it so far? Lovely. Lovely people. Lovely weather. Enjoying it. It's great. Good. Um, are, you, are you spreading the word, as it were? Absolutely. I've given out a lot of leaflets and um, spoken to some lovely people, so it's been really good. Mm. Are you looking to sell this horse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not selling the horse. It's oh. for children to come over and play with, so oh, okay. they're having fun. <laughs> Notice that there. That's a very standout feature. Um, so, uh, looking, at, looking at this here, you specialise in a kids' education, it looks like. That's right. I've actually written a book called Time Stables Fun with Naughty Katie, and it's actually an alternative learning method to help children to learn time tables. Okay. It combines the learning of time tables with poetry, ah. and it's actually being used in some schools as well. I've had quite a few um, primary school teachers buy the book from me, and it's got great reviews online. If you have a look at LorraineReed.com, you'll see some great reviews on there. Okay. Uh, what decided to, uh, or what made you decide rather, to get into this field of, uh, of writing educational literature for children? So how it happened was I've always written poetry and I've always thought about writing a book. But actually, funnily enough, when I wrote this book, it was actually a manuscript for my eight-year-old daughter. She was eight last year and she was struggling with her times tables. And um, she just found it really difficult, but she loves stories. So I basically created this to help her. And so many people wanted to use my method because it worked so well that I turned it into a book. Okay. And now it's helped a lot of people, including my daughter, who's brilliant at time tables now. Is, is your daughter this uh, aforementioned naughty Katie, or is that someone else? OK, so she's actually not called Naughty Katie, well, yeah, <laughs> although she but, can be naughty at times. Yeah. But um, no, that's, um, that's the character in the book. Uh, but she is your daughter's likeness. Um, is she? Well, actually, she's just coming in right now, so um, oh. you can sort of see what you think. <laughs> All right. um, she, she's, she's quite a big girl most of the time. Okay. Now that she knows her time stable, she's... Say hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, I have been joined by... What's her name? Katie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the cover star of uh, Lorraine Reed's newest book, or one of her newest books. <laughs> so, yes, it's a, it's a gathering. It's a, it's a very festive gathering. Um... I mean, where do you see where do you see your uh, works going from here? Because you've obviously dabbled in poetry, you've dabbled in times tables mixed with poetry. So, where do you see yourself uh, advancing to? Um, well, actually, my, my husband and myself are actually about to start up a publishing business as oh, well, okay. um, which is quite exciting. Um, like I say, if, if there's anyone out there that's interested or might have some poems or a story that they've got hidden away and never really done much with, 
if you visit lorrainereed.com and drop me an email I can um, sort something out for you and you know why not turn your idea into a book as well like I did it's so much fun I'm with Shivesh who's part of the Rotary Club of Edgware and Stanmore Shivesh how are you today I'm doing fine thank you and what are you here supporting we're here to support and polio now and the various fundraising that Rotary that our Rotary Club does amazing and how do you do the fundraising we uh, do we uh, promote lavender bags, we do the crocuses, and, which we're selling for a pound, and then we do our own uh, fundraising event, which is the race night and the quiz night. Wonderful. And which areas of the world is it that you really help with this important uh, all, donations? All over, all over the world, because Rotary was founded in 1905 by a guy called pa uh, Paul Harris, and in his meeting he had only four members. Now, 111 years later, there's uh, 1.2 million members around the world in 220 countries. Wow, all coming together to help all, eradicate polio. All coming together to help. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Amy, um, so tell me a bit about yourself, why are you here today? Hello, my name's Sandra. I'm the chairman of Opus, which is the orthotic and prosthetic users group here at Stanmore. We've just been taught to walk by Nordic Walking Watford, so we've come along to do the Buttercup walk, Nordic Walking because as amputees, it's a fantastic exercise and we've just all walked a mile and we've walked on lumpy grass previously, <laughs> so we're all very, very proud of ourselves. Oh, that is really incredible. I was once a patient as well, so I think it's really important that we try and come back every yes, year yes. and like help the hospital. Um, so is this your first is this your first walk? I've done two I think or three before yeah. the walking so yes and with the poles it just seems so much easier. Yeah. I recommend it. <laughs> no it's really good and it's really big turnout as well yeah. and when they've combined it with the fate uh, with the colour and the there's loads more stools oh sorry <laughs> Um, so do you think you'll be coming back for more years to come? Every, every, every year, because Opus will be here, uh, yes. continuing as the support group for, for users. And yes, we'll be here next year. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. You. Hope you uh, get very fast again. <laughs> How come you're partaking in the walk today? Um, our daughter Erin has got arthritis, she's got juvenile arthritis, so she's had seven <laughs> op um, steroid operations done at the Stanmore Hospital, so we come and support most years when she's able to do oh, the walk. Oh, great. Are you Erin? Yeah. Hi Erin, how are you? Good. And um, how many years have you been doing the walk now? I think you've done four or five of them now, haven't you? Four or five. You've yeah, four done. or five. And you look very, very happy to be here. I think you're the happiest person I've seen today. <laughs> yeah. You are happy, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit more about uh, you. Um, I like swimming. I like art. I love drawing. And all that links into art, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm ten. Ten years old. And how long have you been at the RNOH for? The, how long have you been coming to the, the hospital here? Eight years. Eight years. That's a long time. So I guess this feels a bit like a home from home. Yeah. And this is the first year that the Stanmore Fate has been here. Did you notice that? There was a lot more here today. So there was a, a lot more stalls and yeah. a lot more colour. And I think, I don't know if this is true, but was there a bouncy castle? Yeah, there was. There was three. Have you been on the Bouncy Castle yet? Yeah. You have? Oh my gosh. And the music. Did you listen to the music earlier? Yeah, I could hear it when I was on the Bouncy Castle. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Erin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with my daughter, Myla J. She's five this year and she was born with hip dysplasia. She was treated here to correct her dislocated hip. Um, when she was eight months old, so this is our fifth walk. We've wow. done it ever since. Um, we just feel it's, it's important to come and to give back and to raise some money and to have some fun, to support everybody, and we just thoroughly enjoy it. It's a great family day out. So do you think you'll be back again in the following years? I think we'll be back every year, <laughs> every year. Great, <laughs> thank you. Should we grab a quick one? Yep. This one. <laughs> this is my Hello, uh, do you like Stanmore? Is it a nice place to come? Yeah. <laughs> do you enjoy, so do you enjoy coming here even though uh, it's not been so great in the past? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, today's highlights of the Buttercup Walk, and if you want to listen to that again, you can do very shortly via our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash Radio Broccoli for that, and highlights of other previous editions of Broccoli News and Broccoli News Extra. Now, don't forget, this Wednesday in the hospital, there's another very special event taking place. It's the Topping Out Ceremony. Uh, this is to do with the new buildings which have been going up in the old car park. You'll have uh, no doubt been seeing them with the big cranes and everything. Well, they're doing the last brick this Wednesday and there's going to be a special ceremony uh, which will be broadcast live on Radio Broccoli from 11 o'clock this Wednesday morning. So do tune in for that. We'll have highlights as well next Sunday here on Broccoli News. And if there's anything else happening here in the hospital that you want to uh, find out more about, then you can call us on extension 5483 and we'll try and cover it on future editions of Broccoli News and Broccoli News Extra. Don't forget, Broccoli News Extra is on five days a week at midday for another chance to hear some of our recent interviews. And also Monday evenings at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow you'll get the chance to hear our full interview uh, with Tony Goldstone, the chairman of the RNOH. Stay tuned to Radio Broccoli. Up next, it is Bedside Bingo. Your chance to win some Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving a bed. David Rouch calling out the numbers tonight. Good luck if you're playing along. And then at 8 o'clock, it's all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show. Get all your favourites in now. Broccoli News returns at the same time next week then as we'll have highlights of the topping out ceremony taking place. But for me, Alan Joyce, good night. Good night.